Right, are we okay? Are we good? Okay, right. Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and I'm back in the car because basically that's where I get enough time to record these things and let's do a sports talks, yeah? In the rain. Hopefully that mic is directing towards me and you can't hear the rain but it is near the windscreen so you might. But anyway, let's talk Formula One again, okay? It's been a couple of days now, or well, a few days. Um, Fernando Alonso has announced his retirement from Formula One. Uh, somewhat expected, let's be honest, I don't know what that noise was, but there we go. But somewhat expected because the last couple of years have been a bit of a struggle, haven't they, let's be honest, with McLaren. But yeah, I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I've done a little bit of research, and when I say research, I've checked his Wikipedia page, and we can just talk about his stats and stuff. So, he made his debut in 2001 for Minardi, do you remember that? And even then they were saying that he was one to watch. And they say that a lot, don't they? They say that a lot about drivers when they're in smaller teams and how there can be a, a future world champion. I think they said it about um, Fisichella. Is it Fisichella? Fisichella? Anyway, him and Trulli, um, Baricello. He was a good driver. But he was always going to be a number to Schumacher anyway. But he's one that actually achieved what everyone said that he would. In my regard, in my opinion, I think that he should have uh, had achieved more. But he's been unlucky with um, not so much the teams that he's chosen to drive for, just the time he's chosen to drive for them if you know what I mean. Because, let's be honest, he should have won stuff with Ferrari, but after Schumacher and some rule changes, teams always go through a lull, and he seems to hit the lull in the teams. Like, they're big teams, but he always hits, like, the wrong time to join them. So he should have... Like, he contested world championships for Ferrari but he never won one did he and Renault he's a two time world champion back to back 2005-2006 with Renault then he went to McLaren for that one season with Lewis and it didn't gel so he went back to Renault didn't he drivers do that a lot but he's had a relationship a good relationship with Renault and that's why eventually in the second coming of him going to McLaren, they ended up with Renault engines after disaster with the Honda, which should have been which should have been a, a perfect like marriage. They won stuff with um, Ayrton Senna and other drivers when they were McLaren Honda, and that's you know the smart move. He thought that that was going to happen again, but it didn't, did it? Uh, he's just been unlucky. Um, but yeah, I think that he should have won more um, championships and looking here he's had entries to Formula 1 Grand Prix in the 17 years or will it be 18 something like that um, he's had 305 entries with 303 starts he's had 32 wins which is which is like yeah, it's a good number, like, a good number, but he should have had more more championships. I'm not going to keep saying that he should have done. He's had 97 podiums. Do you think he's going to be able to add three this year in the last remaining races? I don't think so to hit 100, but you never know. He's ha garnered 1,893 points, but let's just clarify that he started when the points were smaller and only went down a few places 
and now like the point system is completely different so anyone from modern day Formula 1 is going to blitz any of the like legends because the point system is different so there should be like a, a ratio thing because like those records are going to get uh, blasted all of the time and in those 32 wins and 303 starts out of 305 entries he's had 22 pole positions and 23 fastest laps Something tells me that he's not going to add to those in his final races. And it's such a shame. Like, he's 37. But he undoubtedly is the one of the most, if not the most, skilled and gifted drivers to ever drive a car, let alone Formula One. So, and you can tell that because whatever he turns his hand to, like, he's had to go at... Um, Le Mans and he's won it I mean I know that's not just him and it's a team event but it's an endurance thing isn't it so you know like props to him he's going for that um, triple crown and in the future it hasn't been announced right that's why I've waited like a couple of days I've waited a couple of days because I wanted to see if he was going to announce what he was going to do next by the time I recorded this so we could talk about it but I strongly believe that he's going to go to IndyCar because he wants that triple crown although I have just read while I was pulling his information up on my phone that apparently Formula E have made a swoop to try and sign him to one of the teams for their championship and as much as I think Formula E is cool and He's just, he's going to IndyCar first, right? He'll come, he might come and do a season or something when he's like done his Triple Crown, but I don't see him going to Formula E just yet. The changing of the guard. And that was another thing, because now that he's left McLaren, it looks pretty much like, even though I said in the last video that I thought we might get one more season with Fernando and... It would be an all-Spanish team at um, McLaren with Science. It looks like Science is going to replace Alonso and partner Van Dorn in the McLaren. So that is life after Alonso. And as much as I think they're both talented, if McLaren can't sort out the car, because it's fundamentally the car now, because they've changed engines and they're still struggling... Um, they're going to be nowhere and they're going to be in trouble and that's not good is it for the sport like it's one of the legendary teams and like I've said already in this video Fernando has driven for the most legendary teams in Formula 1 like McLaren Ferrari and like whenever Renault have been in the sport like properly, whether as like a main manufacturer or supplying cars like Williams, Red Bull, um, and other teams, they've won world championships. And at that point in his career where he did the double with Renault, he was he was like being compared to and on the same track as Schumacher. Schumacher was with Benetton Renault, won world championships, and then moved to Ferrari, which is exactly what Alonso did. But he moved to Ferrari after um, Schumacher retired, which is fair enough. He just hit Ferrari at the wrong time, and he was close to winning it a couple of times, but and then they dropped off and he struggled and he stuck with them. Like he is loyal, isn't he? He does stick with teams through hard times. He might get bolshy and try and like make the team do something. Because that's what he does. He's a winner and he wants to win. But he is loyal and he sticks with them because he believes in like making something happen. 
and he can he can drive any car and get so much more out of it than any other driver like I honestly think that that he can like that McLaren even though it's struggling to get into the points and did the season before like and it was down at the bottom the stuff that he was getting that to do was making it look better than anybody could have done like they're going to struggle because he is a talent and he made the McLaren has made the McLaren look better and perform better than it should be and if they don't sort it out next season with um, the two new young drivers I'm not saying that they're bad and science is like he can probably do something but they're not in Fernando's league and through the choices he's made you'd think that he would win more world championships but he's just been unlucky so I think he's going to go to IndyCar and have a good two or three seasons there, complete his triple crown, and then he can go off and do whatever he wants. He's 37. Like people in IndyCar, I mean, I don't, I haven't watched it much recently, but when I was a kid, like you could be older and race in IndyCar. You know, I mean, you could be in Formula One, but do you know what I mean? Like Mario Andretti was in his 50s. And he was still racing and winning, like the, and people like like. IndyCar, it might have changed a bit now, and it's a young man's sport. But they're like, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like. When you're done racing in one, you can go to IndyCar and still be successful. And then probably when he's done that, he'll come and have a go at Formula E and different other. He's a racer, and he is, if not the one of the greatest racing drivers ever and yeah there's been stages in his career when I haven't been a fan of him but I think like when they're younger they get like bullish and especially when they've won back to back world championships their ego takes over and that's that's fair and that's right isn't it but uh, they mellow out when they get older and he has mellowed out and I enjoy him racing and his um, communications and the way he talks and like he's knowledgeable and he knows so thank you Alonso for the 17 17 or 18 years I can't remember like I think 2001 to 2000 and if you go to the end of this it's probably we'll say we'll say 17 it's yeah, okay. But thank you for the races and the, the wins and the laughs and like it was just a talent. So I will be watching you when you're in IndyCar because that's what I expect you to jump into. You can get a drive in there no matter and then you can win the Indy five hundred, you can win the whole thing and then you deserve to win championships in other um in other series. You are talented. So thank you. Thank you for everything. And the enjoyment to weekends that you have brought to my life. And I'm sorry that you were unlucky and didn't win more. I thought you were going to at least get five. People were saying that you were going to challenge Schumacher. but And you could have done. You are definitely on his level. If not a more talented driver... Schumacher was just um, uh, uh, lucky and sneaky and um, gifted in that way in some regards. Like he, he had a win at all costs attitude and, and that you could get away with it because the rules were slightly different even though there was an uproar but he would win at any cost like in old school from one. He would take people out and he did. He won't admit it but he did. But you have done remarkably well and you should be extremely proud I know you are what am I saying he doesn't care what I think but thank you Alonso and you guys I will see you in the next one I don't really know if what I've said has made much sense but I just wanted to acknowledge that somebody who I've watched 
his whole career, has retired from Formula One. But I will be watching IndyCar because that's what I expect you to do, Alonso. So you are going to be a draw for that. So next season I will be watching and I will be watching you win because you've had one go in it. And even though you did retire, you were up there, weren't you? So I believe that that is what you will do next. You will do next and you will win the Indy 500 and you will have that triple crown because you've got two parts of it. It's the only logical step. Everybody knows that's what he wants to do, so that's where he's going to go, let's be honest. He could just walk into a drive and there someone will give him a seat. But thank you, Alonso. I've rambled on enough. You are a Formula One legend and you will go down in history for life. So... That has been me. This has been Sports Talks. Please, I know I just ramble on about sports half the time. There are more things coming. But if you have watched this and in some way found it entertaining and passed some time, please, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it would mean the world to me. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop saying them. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. I'm going to do a little bit of an update video because I've been thinking about what I'm going to do next on the channel and I'm quite excited and yeah so the update video is coming soon followed by what I hope to be two series that are going to carry on on the channel and yeah it'll be fun it's going to be a challenge it's going to be fun um, I'm looking forward to it